My dad always kept us busy around the house, fixing things and making repairs. Some of that was out of necessity because it was cheaper to have four boys helping to maintain the home than calling a repairman. And my dad was good at it, so I wanted to be good at it. For a short while, we even had our own home improvements business. Eventually, I became a pretty good fixer of broken things, an experimenter, trying to salvage or modify performance. I liked to see how things work, how they were put together. I was obsessed with model cars and model airplanes. Although engineering might have been seen as an obvious choice, I loved other forms of technology too. I took computer science in high school, and it was my initial objective when I started thinking about college. But when scholarships started rolling around, civil engineering was my ticket out of the neighborhood. I think I'm stating the obvious when I say the foundation of the Air Force, the theory of flight, is rooted in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Simply put, without those fields, the Air Force would not exist. Our systems and capabilities and those of our adversaries are becoming more and more advanced. And it's not just war fighting and protecting this nation that have become more technically challenging. It is sustaining our daily operations, bringing efficiency in new work, assuring our resources, and protecting our natural assets. These problems are becoming more and more complex, and STEM graduates, I believe, are more likely to possess the necessary skills needed to solve these problems and bring about innovative approaches for things not yet imagined. Advances in technology already have and will continue to have a meaningful impact on the lives of every American. Is it going to be the technology we develop and put to appropriate use, or are we, as a nation, going to rely on someone else? Trust someone else. The most natural aspects we think about diversity include gender, race, ethnicity, and age. But diversity, even in the STEM fields, include personal life experiences, where you're from and socioeconomic background, cultural experiences, education, work experiences, language skills, physical abilities, philosophical and spiritual perspectives, sexual identity, and sexual orientation. During my career, those characteristics have become much more recognized, accepted, and embraced. I knew very few women engineers when I came on active duty, and none of them came from the service academies, and often I was the only black in the squadron, military or civilian. Over time, I began to see a lot more women behind me. As for minorities in the STEM field, I think we still have struggled there, and it has been a bit tricky for the military these last several years, but we need the STEM talent of those with varying sexual identity and our orientation too. As the Assistant DCS for Logistics, Engineering, and Force Protection, my role with the STEM community has largely been in ensuring we focus on career development of the workforce. I've pushed us to share practices and successes in providing career broadening and growth opportunities for our civilian workforce. This has included sharing representation on our career field panels. Outside of the job, there have been some opportunities to interact with youth through college fairs and STEM conferences. I always try to convince our young promising minds of how much we need them in the STEM fields and not just in the Air Force. Sometimes they motivate me just as much as I try to motivate them with their questions and enthusiasm. I always come back to work more determined to make a difference and relieved that I can truly be replaced. They're out there and we need to get to them early. We need to show up in schools and in communities and we need to do it while kids are still developing. I'm talking grade and middle school and we need to do it everywhere. We need to partner with educators. We need to invest in exposure opportunities. Take them on field trips and show them the cool stuff we do. And when we find a gem of a student, not wait until they're near graduation or graduate, we need to make them a reasonable offer, give them internships, help pay for school, and relieve them of debt. We need to be competitive. I'm truly humbled to be given the Black Engineer of the Year Career Achievement and Government Award. I'm grateful for the recognition and to the leadership that supported me. I've had a long and successful career, and it's always nice to be noticed. But it's also a reinforcement that no matter your beginnings, when you stay in the company of good people and focus on doing good things, good things are likely to happen. I've been fortunate to have had a broad experience in the Air Force and got through many tough challenges, but along the way, I learned to stick to what works. For me, that has been believing in something greater than myself and taking care of the people who take care of the mission.